Good evening. My dear friends, wherever you are, you know, you are following, attending this Mass uh, as usual, uh, in a virtual way from your homes. And um, what is beautiful is this, our home, our homes have become churches now. Someone said, you know, the devil has uh, closed on all the Catholic churches, but God, God opened all the homes as churches. This is what we call actually domestic church. Each home is a church. Each family is a church. And that's what we are doing now. We are worshiping God from your own home, from your own places. Let's continue praying for ourselves, for our families, for the world, especially for the corona affected world as we consecrate the world to God. These are the days, moments, or even opportunities for us to look up to God. For some time, or maybe for a long time, many of us have forgotten to look up to God. Probably we have lost a sense of God. And now suddenly, the whole world comes to a standstill. We are not dictated whether we like it or not. We are not controlled by Corona. Coronavirus telling us whether we should go out. Coronavirus is telling us, you know, what we should do, whether we should go, whether we should go to work. Imagine that. Two months ago, everything was normal. And therefore, my dear friends, I strongly invite all my parishioners, all my friends, to look at coronavirus in a positive way and keep asking this question, how can I be a better Catholic? How can I be a better disciple? Let's pray for our children. They are our future, they are our hope. They will learn from you, mothers, fathers, parents, to prepare themselves for their future with the God in their hearts, with the God in their lives. As we begin this celebration, let us offer ourselves. Bring all your offerings, all your prayers, all your intentions to the Lord as we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We always have a struggle. A struggle between choosing good and bad, good and evil, or rather between God and Satan. And whenever we choose Satan, we are against God and we have, humanly as we are, we have made many choices in our life which are not good, which are not right. But one beautiful thing today for us to remember is God is all merciful. God is wonderfully merciful, forgiving. And today the Catholic Church is celebrating all over the world what we call Mercy Sunday, reminding us of the mercy of God, reminding us of uh, you know, supreme, eternal love of God. And therefore, my dear friends, in God, we have life. In God, we are forgiven us, and therefore let us bring all our sins, all our shortcomings, all our failures, and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
My dear friends, I'd like to in invite all of us to join me in praying for um, Yolanda uh, Ramona, the mother of uh, Sheila and me, Ramona, who is, who is in the hospital today. Let's really join her in praying for her that God will preserve her and heal her. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. In Greece we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose bread they have been redeemed. We make this prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. together and had all things in common. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God has given us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who, by the power of God, are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him, now yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, there is a, a humorous uh, uh, story about uh, a Catholic priest who was uh, pulled over by uh, by the cops for uh, by, for speeding, and um, um, so the the cop started writing the ticket. Then uh, the priest told the cop, "Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy." But the cop was not bothered, he kept writing and uh, he wrote the uh, ticket and uh, as he was giving to the priest, the cop said, go and sin no more. <laughs> My dear friends, it's something to, to laugh, right? <laughs> Today I want to reflect, uh, most of my reflection will be based on uh, the divine mercy, the mercy of God. Okay? And I want to start with a, uh, another story, a very moving story, a story that happened here, right in this country. October 6th, 2006 was one of the most painful days or day um, in this country when a young gunman entered into an Amish school and uh, picked up Ten girls and told them line up in front of her, facing the blackboard. And he came and shot them, shot them, shot all, all of them actually. And then he shot himself and killed himself. A story that we all know, right? This is not too far away, 2006, right? You can imagine how devastated the parents were, the young girls, the young children, you know. The, of the ten, five of them actually died. And uh, the parents, you know, the whole community came together mourning the death of um, uh, these young young children. And once they had done that, you know, all of them walked to the house of uh, the killer who had killed their daughters. They paid a visit to the widow of uh, the man, the killer, and uh, they sat with this woman whose husband actually had killed the daughters and tried to sympathize with her and tried to console her, saying that, uh, you know, she was going through a big loss, you know, her own spouse, husband, you know, had killed himself, you know, something uh, apparently in the world standard may look very strange, right? The mothers of the daughters who were killed, gunned down by this man, and they went to the house
house of that, uh, uh, of that young man's wife, the widow, and consoled and reconsoled. They brought food for her, gave her whatever she needed, actually. They were prepared, they were ready to bury their anger, their hatred, before they buried their children. My dear friends, this is an apt story to reflect, to be told a day when we are thinking of uh, the divine mercy. We must be grateful to John Paul II, who is the one who popularized the devotion, and this devotion has spread very, very fast, far and wide. We have uh, the divine uh, mercy chaplet. We have a very good group here. That beautiful prayer. It's a short prayer, the chaplet of the, of the divine mercy. And I'm grateful to the, the ministry of divine mercy here. You do an amazing job. Unfortunately, we can't do anything. We should have had a special mass here, you know, tomorrow, uh, noon mass normally. So we are grateful to, as I said, uh, to John Paul II, who, who of course, um, uh, the saint, you know, uh, Faustina came from Poland. So this devotion, as I said, is very good. But I want all of us to reflect, you know, we, we do the Divine Mercy Chapter, it's excellent, very good, right? This is a, one of the means of uh, this uh, devotion uh, to the Divine Mercy Chapter. It's one of the, you know, one of the good prayers, uh, you, know, you know, one of the good means of uh, coming to God, coming or getting closer to God. But the purpose of uh, declaring uh, the Sunday the first Sunday after Easter as a Divine Mercy Sunday, I believe John Paul II, the Catholic Church, basically has two purposes. Number one, to make us understand how merciful God is. How merciful, how forgiving, how compassionate, how loving God is. So that's a purpose. To really picture, present God to all of us even to hard cold sinners who may be refusing to, to come back to God. We wonder, the church wants to present to God and said, you know what, you come back. And God does not keep a record of all your wrong things. God does not keep a record of all your sins. All the bad things that you have made, you have committed. All the bad things that you probably have done. That's a matter. God is compassionate, is welcoming. And Jesus, through that beautiful story of the prodigal son, really manifested the compassionate father, the father standing for God. God, who is ready to welcome, you know, no questions asked, no reprimands, see, no correction. The father receives the son, the prodigal son, as if he never left him. As a matter of fact, he threw a huge party, you know the story, right? So that's one thing, uh, I suppose, one reason, one message that uh, the Divine Mercy is going to give us, you know, that God is merciful, that God loves us, God accepts every one of us, God embraces all of us. That's one of the powerful uh, messages. The second message is, and that is where we are involved. Because God is merciful and because we are God's children, we must imitate the mercy of God. In other words, we must be merciful, compassionate, loving, forgiving as God is. That is a message. Now that message is very hard to understand or accept, right? Because we are challenged, we are invited to look at God and say how beautiful God is, how merciful God is, and we like him. Do likewise, right? Do likewise. And therefore, my dear friends, you know, I just want to focus, you know, this is a huge topic. We can be merciful, we can be loving, you know, I don't need to talk about that. You know, we all know on the importance, you know, the, the importance of, uh, uh, you know, being merciful, compassionate, forgiving. But I want all of us for a moment, uh, look at this point. Where do we begin? Where do we begin to be compassionate? Where do we begin to be merciful, you know? As I ever said, I mean, you would agree, you know, we are so merciful to people outside, you know? 
as I have always uh, said. We are so kind, we are very, very uh, respectful to other people, other neighbors, maybe the neighbors' wives, you know. When we begin actually the practice of mercy, I want my dear friends, for all of us to begin to practice mercy, compassion, understanding, love, kindness at home. The way we deal with one another, the way we treat one another, we can be merciful, we can be compassionate, we can be kind-hearted. Can you imagine in a family, in a home, this constant you know, debate going on, fight going on, arguments going on, you know? Can you imagine what kind of climate, what kind of environment are we creating in that family? You think your children will be happy to grow up in that atmosphere, in that climate, in the environment where the parents are constantly fighting, arguing, there is no communication without fighting? Now, keep this in mind. If two others, I mean the husband and wife, if two other, others, not babies, have to yell at each other, raise their voice and communicate their message, please mark my words, there's something wrong. There's something absolutely wrong in that family, in that relationship. The two others, there's no need to yell at each other, shout at the top of the voice. No, there's no need. Respect. The best expression of mercy and being merciful is to be respectful. And, and when we treat one another, when we are merciful, when we are compassionate, kind-hearted, understanding, you are creating a real church. Your home becomes a church. Holy Catholic church is, you know, sort of uprooted from here. You put it there and that becomes a church. Your home becomes a church. There's respect in the family. The way we deal with the children, the way that the, the children deal with the parents, you know, so, so both ways, right? Both ways. That's what I want. All the families, I would like those of you who listen to me to do. Let's make let's make this our project to make our homes a place where there is a lot of affection, a lot of laughter, a lot of love. See, we are all complaining. Right? We are all complaining that we have no time. We have no time. We are so busy, right? We are busy. What is happening to you now? We spend your time. You come and see our parking lot in St. James, where I see a lot of people, parents. They have plenty of time. They are playing the children. See? <laughs> we, it, took, it took a coronavirus to give us time, right? Focus on your family. Let each one of us, all of us, make our home. A new church, a new church, where everyone is respected, everyone is loved. And so I think this is a message we should all take home as we celebrate the Mass, the second Sunday of the Easter, Divine Mass Sunday. Let each one of us examine and see if my home is a church, if my home is a, you know, is a place where my children are very happy, or is my home, I'm sorry, is it a hell? Is it a hell? Yeah. Have we made our home a hell? You know? That message, if we take, I think we can do a lot. We can do a lot to improve our home, our families, our relationship. In closing, I want all of us to focus on the first reading. It's amazing to see how the cat the the early church, read the what do you call the, the Acts of the Apostles, right? You read See how beautiful the early church is. Everybody is sharing, everybody is putting, everybody is pitching in. This common collection, they are trying to find out who is in need and what kind of needs they have. They were reaching out to these people. There was enthusiasm, there was kindness, understanding, there was mercy. There was mercy. Everyone was driven by mercy. And as a result, you know, the Membership of the church increased by leaps and bounds, to use a beautiful phrase, right? By leaps and bounds. One day we hear 5,000 members were added 
another day 3000 people were added and the membership grew there was persecution they had trouble but the church was a joyous one a happy one and the moment we lost the, that joy that happiness we lost our church maybe coronavirus is inviting us to bring our church back to what it should be to the original church where there is you know familiarity friendship cordiality and everybody uh, treated everybody with the love and respect and the church grew my dear friends someone said i don't remember who unless each catholic become the gospel jesus will not be known meaning let me explain that maybe you are the gospel that people could read or someone could read and become different do you know what i mean be example your example life example can change people and therefore let me give the challenge to all of you today become a gospel that your neighbor may read your relative may read somebody in your workplace may read and see look at that man look at that woman she's different and that's what i want to be in my life that's what we need to that's why exactly that's what exactly you know saint francis probably meant when he said you know preach the gospel all the time preach the gospel all the time and if needed use words preach the gospel all the time and if needed use words what does it mean preach the gospel by our example and therefore my dear friends in closing i want to invite all of us starting with me to become another bible another gospel let people look at you let people read your lifestyle your example and say in their hearts in their life i want to be like him or like her amen Please stand. We shall now renew our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, on second Sunday of Easter, as we celebrate the divine mercy, we pray that all of us will become merciful, compassionate. understanding caring of other people we pray that you will bless our families our children you will preserve all of us from the fear of coronavirus keep us always in your mercy father we also bring to you our petitions and prayers that on this divine mercy sunday the church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming christ's mercy We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That leaders of governments will work to ensure that all people can live in peace despite our crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That during these challenging times, we ask God and His Holy Mother for their love and protection from the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayers for all healthcare professionals who care for the sick, that God will protect them from the illnesses they are treating and make them instruments of healing. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayers for all the people who have contracted the coronavirus. May God comfort those whose loved ones have died. Bring peace to those who have been exposed. Give patience to those who are quarantined. Protect people from catching it, and strengthen those risking their lives to care for the sick. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those trapped in confusion or doubt, fear and anxiety, that they may be filled with peace and the light of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us, that we may face the trials and difficulties we are encountering with the confidence and certainty that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us now pray for our own personal intentions. Let us pray for the soul of uh, Emilio Melanda, the God grant him eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We shall now pray a prayer for St. James Parish. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of our life. We will be in our hearts Here we live in our love for you and our souls in life. And ask for your love and friendship among us to flourish. Open your eyes, dear Lord, to see your love and care. And count to your blessings in the spirit of sincere prayer. So in our hearts are created the seeds of gratitude. And create in us your children and loving attitude. Make us your titles for daily in your service. By giving help us to experience in love and peace. Teach us to give not out of beauty, guilt, or grudge, but to the spirit of thanksgiving, thanks to pledge. Dear Father, help us to build you a beautiful church, where we can all gather to worship and praise you much. We believe in your help, there is nothing impossible. So God is Father, to make your temple in our life. We see the intercession of St. James, our patron saint, and of Mother Teresa, a modern day saint. This prayer we humbly bring to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and Mary, our loving Mother. Amen. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May you accept sacrifice in your hands. 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all for his church. Except, O oh Lord, we pray the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with all Pascal joy, every land, every people, excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> This is the moment of consecration, then the ordinary bread, ordinary wine will be transformed into the body and the blood of Christ. At this moment, I invite all of you to consecrate the world to Jesus, to God and to his mother Mary. I said, intercede with the Mary, your mother, so that Mary will play a role, especially in these moments of uncertainty, that the Mary mother will see the pain, the suffering that her children are going through because of a coronavirus. Let's dedicate ourselves. Let's consecrate our homes, our children, that no evil will ever come upon us, that we will all be safe, free from coronavirus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took a bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Let's remember and pray for those deceased members of our families and friends. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. James, and all your saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with the him and in the O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My dear friends, at this time, I know you would long for communion, 
but those of you are watching attending the mass at home you are not able to receive uh, communion however the church invites you at this moment to receive communion spiritually and therefore you could uh, pray with me as i pray you can you can repeat after me and just imagine that just believe jesus enters in your heart this moment my jesus my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were here there i embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you never permit me to be separated from you amen Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I close, I'd like to once again, or I'd like to continue to inform you, remind you that on Sunday, every Sunday, we have a the sacrament exposed from 8 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You're most welcome. You know, very few people are here at one time. Uh, come uh, whenever you choose from 8 to 1, you have a long time. Uh, you can choose whenever you like to come and come and spend a little time in front of the sacrament. And then as you receive, as you go, as you leave the church, I will be giving you communion, communion, holy communion to all of you. And I will be here throughout the day. And therefore, uh, don't worry, uh, I will not miss you. Uh, you know, and we have plenty of place for a social distancing. You're not going to be crowded. You know, not everybody's coming together 
and therefore you should be absolutely safe. It's more safe than to be outside, right? And so I really want to recommend in, in but if you feel comfortable, if you feel okay to come out, you know, you are taken care of, you, uh, you put on a mask and, uh, you know, whatever you have to take care of, you have to do. But if I'm saying in the church, there's plenty of ways for you to be, you know, to keep the distance from each other. And uh, after all, you are not here for a long time, just spend a little time in prayer, and then you'll see communion in and then you leave. I want to, I really want to promote, I want to encourage people, you know, we are not breaking any law, but we are keeping to the rules, and we will do everything to preserve the rule, right? We, we want to be together with the, with the, with the, uh, the agency, the government, right? So, uh, this is very simple. You come, you just spend a little time in front of the sacrament, pray, and then you go, and as you go, you have a communion. So you attended a virtue with a mass, and then you also have a communion. I'd like to thank uh, Manny. Manny is ever young. He's the one among the singers for Christ, and also singers for Christ for singing, for, uh, you know, for the mass. Thank you very much, and also the lectors and everyone. And of course, I really want to thank uh, uh, Billy, my photographer. He has been so faithful. Uh, you know, let's give uh, Billy a <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.